Hello everyone, welcome back to .NET Core Central. In my last video, I discussed about Entity Framework, how to use Entity Framework Core with .NET Core to add, edit, and delete records. Today in this video, I'm going to cover three topics. The first one is how to use Entity Framework Core to do an inline query. Second one is how to use Entity Framework Core to use store procedure. And third one is how to use Entity Framework Core to use SQL transaction. If you have not watched my video, I'll provide the link above. You can click on it and watch the previous video on Entity Framework. So for this one, let's first start with how to use Entity Framework Core for inline queries. Now in my previous video, Video, I had an employee provider which is deriving from I employee provider and which takes the employee context. An employee context is the class which derives from DB context and acts as the gateway to the database and the employee table. And the employee provider was just using the employee context to return an employee by the user ID. Now today what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another class called employee provider with inline query and in that I'm going to use an inline query to return essentially the same record set. So let's start. Here also I'm going to implement the same interface which is I employee provider. First thing I'm going to do is create a constructor so that the employee context can be injected. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the employee context here and from employee context I'll use the employees property and instead of directly using it I'm going to use from SQL row that's the method using which I can pass row SQL to get data from the database. So this is going to return the this is going to return the employee based on the ID provided using a inline SQL query. So now let's go ahead and test it. So I'm going to go back to the main program and I'm going to keep the connection string and employee context everything is same. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to get rid of this code. So only thing I'm going to change here is instead of employee provider. I'm going to use employee provider with query and I'm going to keep everything as same and I'm going to just run this. So once I run this you can see it is getting the name from the database which is here the first name last name and address so you can see the name here it is getting the same name and saying welcome John Doe. So this is working as expected. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a store procedure and this is the store procedure I have written. It's a simple store procedure. It is get employee by ID and here I'm doing the same thing. I'm just selecting the 
ID, first name, last name, address, home phone, and cell phone based on an ID condition. And the ID is passed as a parameter to the store procedure. So to use this store procedure to access the data, I'm going to create another class and I'm going to name it as employee provider with store procedure. And this class also will implement the interface I employee provider. And similarly here also I'll create a constructor to inject the employee context. And then here I'm going to use the employee context dot employees and I'm going to use from same function SQL row but instead of passing the inline query I'm going to pass the name of the store procedure and the ID parameter and then here I'm going to say exact and provide the store procedure name which is dbo dot get get employee by ID and then I'm going to pass the parameter which is at the rate ID and here And here I can pass the ID. And after that, I'm going to do dot to list and and from the to list, I'm going to do faster default. This is one thing important because when we use store procedure we instead of directly getting a faster default we first get a list and then from there we do a faster default and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the program and use this method instead and here I'm going to change it with inline query to with SP and then I'm going to run this function everything else will remain the same and if I run this, I should get the same result. Yeah, so I see the same result coming back. So now that uh, you see, it's relatively extremely simple to use a inline query as well as a stored procedure with Entity Framework Core. Now the next thing I'm going to cover is how to use Entity Framework Core to have a transactional operation. So for that, I'm just going to create a new class and I'm going to name as transactional create. So I'm going to say employee transactional create. I'm here in this class, I'm not going to do anything crazy and I'm just going to okay let's first start with uh, setting up the class so in the constructor I'm going to have employee context because that is needed and then I'm going to create a public method here and I'll keep it as void for the time being and I'm going to name it as uh, create and this one will take an array of employee and then here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a transactional write to create all the employees part of the same transaction
but before I do that first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say using transaction So I'm going to begin a transaction from the database object provided by the employee context. So I'm doing here transaction equal to employee context or database dot begin transaction. And at the end of it, I'm just going to say transaction dot commit. I'll just move the try catch block inside or I'll just get this one outside. I will have the try catch block and here okay and in this case I'm just going to say transaction dot rollback. So if there is any exception which occurred during updating the employees, I'm going to try to roll back. And after that, I'll just do log, etc. Um, here and in this, at, at this place now, I'm going to use the employee context dot employees dot add, and I'm going to pass the employee. And then after that, I'm do I'm going to do employee employee context dot safe changes so essentially what I'm doing is in the create first I create a transaction then inside a try catch block I do for each employee add the employee to the employees of the employee context and then save changes and after all of this is done just commit the transaction and if there is any exception in the process just roll back the data and this is, as you can see, it's very similar to how we do transaction in ADA.NET as well. So the good thing is we don't have to learn anything new. Now I'll go back to the main uh, program class in the main method. I'll keep the employee provider as is. And then here I'm going to create a couple of employees. And I'll keep the home phone and cell phone empty. And then second one. So I created an array of employee with uh, two employees in it. And then what I'm going to do, do is I'm going to create the employee transactional create class. The class name should have been creator instead of create because right now it's a verb. So I'm just going to change it.
okay and it takes the employee context just the context here and then we can say employee creator dot create and pass the employees array into it and then I'll just get rid of this so we can just go back to the database and do a select to see the output so let me run this function so there was no error so I'm hoping it works so I'm going to go back to the database and here I'm just going to execute the select queries and I can see that the names are added so I have the name one last last name one name two <laughs> I messed up in the code but that's okay we can still see that the data is added appropriately so that's what I wanted to cover today these are apart from using the out-of-box API for add edit delete and get we can use inline query which is using the from SQL row and then we can use store procedure which is also from raw SQL and when we use store procedure we could do anything meaning the store procedure internally can have either create or edit or delete or transactional read write whatever we want to do and this is mainly for legacy applications which already have store procedures in it we can use this and then last but not the least we can use transaction outside of SQL inside of the C sharp code just like area.net and we can do transactional writes with commit and rollback so that's all I had to cover today thanks so much for watching this video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe it and let me know in the comment how you use entity framework code today and is there anything else that I have not covered in the video which you have done and might be useful to everyone thanks